Hello and welcome back to our complete guide. This is part 2 of our white water guide and I will talk about bubble spray and dust generation. As explained in the previous video, bubbles and spray are playing a special role in the simulation because they both become foam when they touch the fluid surface. Dust plays its own role and keeps being just dust particles. Ok, you can decide to use all available kinds of wild water or choose one or multiple kinds by enabling or disabling them in the wild water panel. Let me show you this explain graphic from the foam tutorial. This is the fluid. The fluid itself will be simulated as particles that are the blue dots you can see and later on they will be meshed by our add-on. The result is called fluid surface in the outliner. These fluid particles are in motion depending on what happens in your scene and generate abatis. Like with every particle system, white water particles need emitters to be emitted. The emitter generation depends on settings we will talk about and placed also depending on the settings inside the mass of fluid particles. Something you should know is that the most effective way to increase the number of particles is to increase the resolution of your simulation. Because this means to have more fluid particles and this means to have more white water particle emitters. Changing the minimum maximum energy speed fields will help you too, as told in the previous video about foam generation. Bubbles are generated by higher turbulences underwater and raised up to the top depending on settings I will explain in this video. This means that fluid particles need to be in motion. An effective way to generate bubbles is to use obstacles, because they generate higher velocities when pushing fluid particles. Here is an example of two different simulations. The first one shows a slower obstacle, what means to have less bubbles because fluid particles are not pushed that much. And the second simulation shows a faster obstacle. As we have higher velocities here, more bubbles are generated. When talking about emission, there are a few settings that I would like to explain. There are three fields to control the emission rate. Please notice that these fields will not be used to increase the number of emitted particles, but they limit them. How to get more particles out of the simulator will be explained later. The wave crest emission rate will mostly have an effect on foam and spray generation, while the turbulence emission rate is the one that have an effect on bubble generation. And the dust emission rate, yes, you're right, it's for dust. Let's compare the turbulence emission rate using this beautiful fracture modifier simulation. By the way, if you would like to learn how to use the fracture modifier, you should take a look to the Blender physics webpage. A link is in the description. When these pieces are falling down into the water, I would like to see many bubbles. With the default settings, it looks like this. The lights on the ground are placed there to make bubbles better visible. And this is with the turbulence emission rate increased to 1000. There is no difference, because we increase the limit of maximum particles from 300 to 1000, while no more particles were emitted. There are some advanced settings available, if you enable them using the advanced button in the white water panel. Check highlight advanced settings to find them more easy. Do you remember the energy speed settings from the foam tutorial? There was a curve that shows how white water particles will be generated depending on fluid velocity. Well, for bubble this works exact the same way, but with other ranges. These fields need to be modified to have more or less particles. For bubbles, you should use the turbulence field and of course increase the emission rate fields to increase the upper limit for emission. Here are some comparisons of different settings. In this scene, I set the minimum turbulence to 100 and the maximum to 1000. And here, with minimum turbulence set to 1 and the maximum set to 2. That flickering comes from denoising and is not an issue with our simulator. You can control the way how bubbles are rising up too. 
There are two settings you will find in the Particle Settings panel. The first one is the Drag Coefficient. This defines how bubbles are dragged by fluid particles. And the second thing is the buoyancy coefficient. This defines how bubbles are floating toward the fluid surface. Here are some comparisons. This is the original animation with default settings. And here I have decreased the drag coefficient down to 0.1. And here the drag coefficient is back on 0.8, but the buoyancy coefficient is decreased to 0. And a third example with drag set to 0.5 and buoyancy set to a negative 1. Well, and there are some settings for the lifetime. By default, bubbles are rising up to the fluid surface and become foam. What means increasing the lifetime will only have a visible effect if they not became foam before their lifetime is up. Here's a comparison of the default settings and some modifications for a longer lifetime. I set the buoyancy to zero, so they will not rise up to the top. Useful to simulate dirt underwater as idea. Whenever you are going to change the lifespan settings, please note that these settings are global for all white water particles. If you would like your settings to take effect on foam bubble spray dust each by each, you need to change the lifespan modifier on the right side. Alright, this is all about bubbles. So let's get over to spray particles. Spray is generated when the fluid surface will break itself or other objects are breaking it. You can limit the emission rate of generated spray particles using the Wavecrest field. Here is a comparison of Wavecrest emission set to 300 and set to 1000. Again, here is no change visible as long as we don't set new values for minimum and maximum curvature. That means spray particles have advanced settings too. Enable them by clicking the advanced button and check the highlight box. Spray particles are most influenced by the curvature settings. Here you see the default settings of 0.4 and 1.0 for minimum and maximum. And another one set to minimum 0 0.01 and maximum 0 0.1. As told before, always remember to increase the emission rate field when making these changes, otherwise you will not see any difference. By the way, the curvature setting will mostly have an effect on the fluid surface. Ryan sent me this drawing to explain this. Having lower curvature means to have rounder waves, while higher curvature means to have sharper waves. And this has an effect on white water generation. But remember, the best way to get more white water particles is to use a higher simulation resolution and change the minimum and maximum energy speed settings. What is also very interesting is that we can change the spray speed. So spray particles will fly more or less further. You can set it up in the spray emission speed field. Here are some comparisons. Default set to 1. And some more faster with 3.0. There's also a drag coefficient for spray particles. You will find it in the particle settings. This example was simulated using the default of 3. And this with drag Z to 0. And another one with drag Z to 5. When it comes to lifetime, you will use the same fields like for foam or bubbles. Remember, these are global for all white water particles, so you have to change the lifespan modifiers on the right to modify each by each. And as with bubbles, spray becomes foam when touching the fluid surface. Remember this when changing the lifetime for spray.
Okay, well, we covered bubbles and spray, and that means it is time to talk about dust. Dust works different as the other white water particles, as it will not become foam when it touches the fluid surface. It is there to make underwater streams visible, and will be emitted when fluid particles with enough velocity will hit an obstacle. And if there is turbulence in the fluid near the obstacle, such as vertexes or swirling motion. You can see this in this animation, simulated with a dust emission rate of 300. The cube on the left is an inflow object that brings fluid with high velocity into the scene. The monkey head is an obstacle that will be hit by the fluid particles. This way, dust particles can be generated. As with foam, bubbles and spray, there are some settings you can change to make the simulation work like it's required for your needs. The dust emission rate defines the maximum amount of generated dust particles per second. Here is a comparison of 300 versus 1000. When opening the particle settings panel, you will find the drag coefficient and buoyancy coefficient settings. The default values are 0 0.75 and minus 3.00. Let's compare some different settings. Here is the original simulation compared to a drag coefficient of 0. You can see how it controls how the particles are dragged with the fluid velocity. And this is the original simulation compared to a buoyancy coefficient of 0. This defines how quickly dust particles will sink or not, depending on the value. Yes, and at last step you can control the lifetime of dust in the same way you can do it with all the other white water particles. Remember that you will always find help when holding the mouse cursor over a flip fluid field. A tooltip appears and tells you what's going on there. Finally, let's talk about rendering. By default, all particles will be rendered as white spheres, as you can see in this scene from the bubble comparisons, but with all white water particles enabled. This is because our add-on does not apply materials automatically. When you select white water in the outliner and then take a look into the physics properties panel, you will find a material library panel. This panel allows you to pick a material from our preset library. Just open the drop down field and choose what you need. You should also take a look to the white water particle object panel. There you can define how a single particle will look like, what geometry will be chosen and how big each particle will be rendered. Take notice about that all kinds of white water will change the same way as long as white water is highlighted in the particle object settings mode. To modify each separately, you just need to click the foam bubbles spray dust button. If you would like to see the particles in the viewport without the need to render them, then you should make sure that the checkbox for hide particles in viewport is disabled. And whenever you are changing things here, don't forget to click the reload frame button from the tool shelf to make Blender reload the actual frame with your change settings. Check all kinds of white water for these settings by clicking them in the outliner. Or select the domain and open the flip fluids display settings panel. Then you will find another panel called white water display settings. And when this has been opened, you will find all kinds of white water display settings collected there too. All these fields are linked to the fields you can see when you're selecting something in the outliner. Okay, now as you have seen the complete guide videos about foam, bubble spray and dust, it hopefully helps you in setting up your scene. Of course, if there's anything not clear or you drive into issues with your simulation, we would be happy to help you. Leave a comment below or take a look to our homepage for more contact information. As always in our complete guide series, all scenes can be downloaded. 
For the links take a look to the video description or visit our homepage. We hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching, goodbye.